Now we're getting ready to solve radical equations and also rational exponent equations. And we're going to use this property. This is called the power property. And it says if P and Q are algebraic expressions, then every solution of the equation P equals Q is also a solution of the equation P to the N equals Q to the N for any positive integer N. In other words, we can find solutions to equations with radicals and other powers by raising both sides to the same power to eliminate the radical. Now it's great that you can eliminate the radical by squaring both sides, but the bad news is that just because we square both sides does not mean that the new equation is equivalent to the old equation. They're not exactly the same. The new equation can have solutions that the old equation didn't have. Now, you won't lose any solutions, but you can gain solutions that won't work in the old equation. So, it says each solution of the original equation is also a solution of the new equation, but the new equation may have solutions that are not true for the old equation. So we have to now check every solution we find in the original equation. So this is what we're saying. Radical equations can give you false solutions. You must check all solutions you get from using the power principle. Some solutions will not check in the original equation. You just throw those out. But And if no solution checks in the original equation, the equation has no solution. So I wish I could tell you that always the smaller one won't check and the larger one will, or the positive one, positive one will check, but the negative one won't. It doesn't work like that. They both could check. They both could not check. You might have to throw them both out and have no solution, so you really do just have to check each individual solution. And here we go with our first radical example. So uh, I have a negative radical here. I'd rather it be positive, so I'm going to move that radical to the right side of the equal mark. We have to get the radical isolated anyway, so we may as well take advantage of that and get it positive. Now we will square both sides. That will remove the radical from the right side. It's going to give us x squared on the left side. You know, a square root and a square cancel each other out. Okay, now this is a quadratic equation. So the, the way to solve it is to get all the terms on the same side of the equal mark and decide then whether we need to factor or use the quadratic formula or whatever method we want to use. We're almost always going to be able to factor. So, you know, just be on the lookout for that. I see a lot of students trying to use the formula on problems like this, and that's just adding another layer of difficulty to a problem that's already got enough steps. So always look for a way to factor. Now, uh, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 15, so that's a trinomial that's going to factor into two binomials. x squared is x times x. The minus here tells me the signs need to be different, and the 15's got to be 5 times 3. I'll put the 5 with the positive and the 3 with the negative. That way I get my positive 2x in the middle. Now the two solutions that we'll get from these two factors are negative 5 and positive 3. These, however, are just proposed solutions. One of the biggest things people do wrong in this section is they forget to check their answers to their radical equations. So we need to check both of these. Negative 5, if I put the negative 5 into the equation, then I have negative 5 minus square root of 15 minus 2 times negative 5. Okay, the, the negative 2 times negative 5 is going to make positive 10. And then 15 plus 10 is going to be 25. And negative 5 minus square root of 25 is negative 5 minus 5, which is supposed to be equal to 0, but it's not. So the negative 5 has to get thrown out. And now let's check 3. So I'm going to put the 3 in there. And 2 times 3 is 6. And 15 minus 6 is 9. And 3 minus square root of 9 is going to be 3 minus 3, which really is 0. So that's a check. And our only solution that we get to keep is 3. Here is a similar one that you can try on your own. So pause the video and try it by yourself, and then we'll go through it together. 
and here we go. Let's isolate this radical and then square both sides and that will remove the radical for us. And now we have a quadratic equation. We want to move all the terms to the same side of the equal mark and factor. This is a trinomial, so it's going to factor into two binomials. The signs need to be different, and I need to have 3 times 1. I'll put the 3 with the negative so that my middle term will add up to negative 2x. Now the two solutions I'm going to get from these two factors are positive 3 and negative 1. And because they came from a radical equation after we squared both sides, I need to check them both. Let's check the 3. If we check 3, then uh, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 3 is 9, and 3 minus 3 is 0. And then when we check negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, but we're getting then negative 1 minus 1 is 0, and that's not true. So our only solution is 3. Now here is our first example where we have two radicals. So to solve this one, we're going to have to isolate a radical and square both sides twice, once to remove this radical and once to remove this radical. So first, let's isolate the positive radical that we have here, and we'll square both sides. Of course, squaring the left side will just remove the radical, but squaring the right side is going to cause us to have to um, use the FOIL method, and we're still going to have a radical in the expression when we get finished. So to square this expression, I've written it here uh, twice so we can see how to FOIL it. First times first is going to be 1, and outer times outer is going to be 1 square root of x plus 1. Inner times inner is the same. So 1 of those plus 1 of those makes 2 of those. And then last times last is going to be square root of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1. So essentially it removes the radical, and we just get x plus 1. Okay. So now, we'll want to isolate this radical. So let's combine our like terms on the right side. And then we'll move both of these terms to the left side. So I'm going to subtract them from both sides, but they're going to disappear from the right, and they're going to show up on the left negative. Okay, now combine terms over here. 2x minus 1x is 1x, and 3 minus 2 is 1 and that leaves me with this uh, 2 times the square root of x plus 1. Now I know I said isolate the radical, and it's true you could. If you divide both sides by 2, you'll have a fraction over here, and you'd probably prefer to avoid that. Well, we're lucky because since this is a product, uh, we can square this without having to involve the FOIL method, so it won't cause a big mess or a problem or anything. We'll just go ahead from right here and square both sides. We are going to have to FOIL out the left side because that's a sum. And so I did first times first is x squared. Outer and inner are both going to be 1x. Together they make 2x. And last times last is 1. And over here, I'm just going to square this quantity. which That means that we'll need to square the 2 and square the radical. So squaring the 2, I get 4. And squaring the radical, it just removes the radical. And now let's distribute that 4. And now let's subtract 4x plus 4 from both sides, leaving a 0 on the right, and they'll show up negative over here on the left. And the reason I need to do that is because this is a quadratic equation, so the only way to solve it is to get all the terms on one side and decide what to do. Okay, so now combining like terms, I have 2x minus 4x gives us negative 2x, and 1 minus 4 gives us negative 3. This is a trinomial we can factor. So that's going to be x times x. The signs need to be different. And then to make 3, we do 3 times 1. And if this times this is 0, it means one of our factors is 0. If x minus 3 is 0, then x is 3. And if x plus 1 is 0, then x is negative 1. These are potential solutions. And we'll have to check them both. So here I've plugged in the 3, and I need to see if the left side really does match the right side. 
2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And over here, 3 plus 1 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And so that's a true statement. 3 minus 2 really is 1, so that solution is good. Let's check the other one. If I plug in negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. And under the other radical, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 minus 0 really is 1, so that solution checks as well. So this time we got to keep both solutions, and our answer is 3 comma negative 1. Now here's just a word of caution for you. This is a problem that a lot of people have with these equations. You have to isolate the radical before you square both sides. You cannot eliminate radicals by squaring term after term after term. You can only square a whole side at a time. So when there's more than one term on a side, you're going to need the FOIL method. And here is a double radical equation for you to try solving by yourself. So pause the video and give this one a try, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is add the square root of x plus 2 to both sides so that we isolate this radical. And then we need to square both sides. And now squaring the left side is going to remove the radical, but squaring the right side we're going to have to go through that FOIL process. So first times first is 1. Outer and inner are both 1 times square root of x plus 2, so together they make 2 square root of x plus 2. And then last times last is going to be this radical times itself. So that's going to give us plus x plus 2. Now combining like terms on the right, we'll get 3 plus x plus 2 times this radical. Okay, now we need to get all the terms collected on one side except for this radical. We need to isolate this radical. So let's do minus x on both sides and minus 3 on both sides. And so the 3 and the x both show up negative on the left side. Now combining these terms, 2x minus 1x gives us 1x, 5 minus 3 gives us 2, and here we have the 2 times the radical. Now we'll square both sides again. And squaring both sides this time, the, squaring the x plus 2 gives us x squared plus 4x plus 4. That's the FOIL method. And on the right side, Squaring both sides, because this is a product, we'll get 4 times what's under the radical. So 2 squared is that, and then this radical squared is that. Okay, now we'll distribute the 4, and we see that we have a quadratic equation, so we'll need to collect all the terms on one side of the equal mark. Let's subtract 4x from both sides, and then let's subtract 8 from both sides. And that leaves us with x squared minus 4 equals 0, which of course is a difference of squares, so it'll be easy to factor and solve. And so we come up with two potential solutions of 2 and negative 2. And we'll need to check both of these in the original equation to see if either one works or if maybe both work or maybe both don't work. Okay, checking the 2. We'll have 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 5 is 9, the square root of 9 will be 3. Here, 2 plus 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And 3 minus 2 really is 1, so that one checks. And now let's check the negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 5 is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. And here, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so square root of 0 is 0. And this one comes up true. So we have two solutions. Our two solutions are 2 and negative 2. And here's another problem from the homework exercises. This one has cube roots. Now you don't really treat them any differently except that instead of squaring both sides, we'll need to raise both sides to the third power. We do need to isolate uh, the radicals again, just like we did with the square roots. So I'm going to move the cube root of x to the right side and now we will cube both sides and the third root of the third power just removes the radical just like it did with the square 
and now we will subtract x from both sides and so the x that was positive on the right shows up negative on the left after we subtract x from both sides and then we'll combine our like terms that will give us 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0 this is factorable so we'll factor that into two binomials. 5x squared needs to be 5x times 1x. The signs need to be the same. They both need to be negative. And 2 has got to be 2 times 1. We'll put the 2 here so that we can get our outer plus inner to add up to negative 7x. So this factoring looks good. And now we can set each factor equal to 0 and solve. And our two proposed solutions are 2 fifths and 1. Now, because this is a radical equation, we need to check them both. So I'm going to plug 2 fifths in. And then what we'll have under the radical here, let's just see what we've got. 2 fifths squared is going to be 4 20 fifths. The 25 in the denominator is going to simplify with this 5, and it's going to leave us with 4 over 5. Here, 6 times 2 is 12, so that's going to give us 12 fifths. And here, we've got a 2, but because the other two denominators were 5s, I went ahead and changed this 2 to a 10 fifths. So we're going to be able to add those together because they all have the same denominator. And now, let's see, 4 fifths minus 12 fifths would be negative 8 fifths. And negative 8 plus 10 is positive 2, so we have positive 2 fifths there, minus the cube root of 2 fifths. And so we do end up with 0 on the left, and that matches our 0 on the right. So the, the solution of 2 fifths looks like a good one. Now let's try checking the 1. That'll be a little easier. So I've plugged the 1 in under the radical. So 5 times 1 squared is going to be 5, minus 6 is negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So I have cube root of 1 minus cube root of 1, and that is 0, and that's what it's supposed to be. So this one also checks, and so we got two solutions. We got 2 fifths and 1.